This is actually a good one. This is Milo. <clears throat> and Milo is an Australian chocolatey drink. Uh, it's like a it's like a sports breakfast drink. So he is a sports breakfast drink. Be gone. G'day, uh, I'm Jacob Alordi, and today I am going to be teaching you some Australian slang. Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. An incredibly patriotic chant that uh, that everyone thinks Australians do, but I'm yet to like experience a place where this happens. When you come to America, like everyone, like you get to set or something, everyone goes Aussie, 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 and they expect you to say it back. No, the bush, the bush. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the outback, um, you know, it's kind of like country Australia would be called the bush. You drive out of the city, you end up in the bush. Drop bear, drop bear, drop bear. A real threatening creature um, that drops seemingly out of nowhere from the trees above you in Australia. So beware when you're there, if you ever get there. Beware of the drop bear. That's Australia's best kept secret. Fairy bread is a classic. Um, it's a staple at, uh, at any kid's party or any party for that matter. It is a, uh, a fresh slice of white bread with a, uh, a thick layering of, uh, of, of salty butter. And then you get hundreds and thousands. I don't know what you call those, just like sprinkles that you put on ice cream and you put that on the bread. And that is fairy bread. Try it out. Yeah, kids eat it. Kids eat it, it's great for them. Um, it's, a, it's a formative meal for Australian youth. That's how, <laughs> I have no idea. Shui, shui, I wish I could just like shui and then do one. Um, it's when you uh, pour your beer into a boot or a shoe and you, uh, you skull the beer from inside the shoe. It's a rich Australian tradition. Maggot. You're, you know, you're absolutely maggot. You're just off your face, drunk, falling on the floor, maggot. You'd be like, oh, did you see Rich tonight? Richo's bloody maggot, you know? Goon sack, personal favorite. A goon sack is, uh, is, uh, is like boxed wine. So uh, it has like a little silver bag inside the box and you put it on the thing. And in Australia, we put it on the, uh, on the clothesline so where you dry your clothes outside and we have these spinning clotheslines and you spin the clothesline and you follow the goon bag around until you fall over. It's good fun. And then some people uh, blow up the, the gray sack that had the wine in it and you can use it as a pillow. <clears throat> budgie smuggler. So a budgie smuggler. A budgie is a, uh, a small little colorful bird. It's like this big. And uh, this is a term for like DTs. Um, which are dick togs, um, speedos, like a speedo would be a budgie smuggler. So it's, uh, it's meant to look like you're smuggling a budgie in the speedo. So that's why we call it that. Yeah. Stands out like a shag on a rock. So basically all of these sayings, just take the first two words, stands out. <laughs> That's pretty much what that, I don't know what the shag on the rock has to do with it, but it just means it stands out like a sore thumb. You know what I mean? Like, um, super noticeable. Someone walks in the room with, um, you know, everyone's wearing a suit and they're wearing nothing. They'd stand out like a shag on a rock. Galah. A galah is a, uh, it's like a, a native Australian bird. Um, it's pink and gray. It makes a lot of noise. If you're using it in a, as like Australian slang, you would call someone like a bloody galah. Like uh, if there was a, if there was someone who was a bit of an idiot, a bit of a knob, you know, you'd say, "Oh, that bloody galah, Thomas over there, he's acting like a bloody galah." Yank. You are most likely a yank. A yank. A yank is uh, an American. A Yankee. So if uh, if there were a yank at the bar in Australia. Uh, undoubtedly, everyone that was Australian would be saying, oh, there's a bloody yank here. It would be like that because we would hear you. Um, yeah. I guess I'm kind of a yank now too. Maybe I'm an honorary yank. Pommy. Pommy. Pommy, Pommy. Pommy is a, uh, is, is a Brit, you know, a British person, a pom. I'm not really sure where it comes from, but um, yeah, you'd say pom, bloody pom, poms are here, pommies. It's like a take the piss culture. 
you know, like, um, you'd be like, bloody yank, your bloody pom, and then you'd be friends with them, you know, something like that. Old mate, personal favorite of mine, used all the time. Old mate would be like, um, so say there was a guy that you didn't like, so I'd say to my mate, I'd be like, oh, f the old mate's here. You know, we're at a party, f old mate's over there. And then they would know exactly who I was talking about, if that makes sense. But it also works for, it can have like a positive connotation. You can be like, oh, buddy, um, uh, old mate, old mate, you know, old mate, um, bloody the guy with the hair and the, you know, old mate. And then your friend will be like, oh, buddy, old mate, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can use it as like a, um, to try and figure out who someone is. It's sort of like a, an acquaintance, I suppose. But most of the time it's like, I would say it's negative. It's like, geez, old mate to you, you know. Servo. Uh, servo is your, your service station, I guess for the Yanks it would be a, a gas station. Um, but yeah, so we call them a service station. So you go to the servo, you know, you get chalky milk, you know, get some, uh, some petrol, we call gas petrol. Uh, so you'd go to the servo to do that. Woolies. Woolies is where we get our groceries from. It's a grocery store. So it's called Woolworths, but we call it Woolies. A Woolies run chocolate milk. That's what you would get all the time. I would, I would get a chocolate milk and a cooked chook, which is like a uh, hot chicken. Tuck shop. Tuck shop is actually where my mother works. Uh, the tuck shop is... Um, is like, I guess in America, uh, your cafeteria, except usually at a lot of the schools that I went to, it was run by uh, like the mothers of the school and they would, uh, you know, cook spaghetti and stuff like that. So that's tuck shop. It was a good day, like on a Friday, your mum might give you five bucks and you can go get a icy pole or something like that. Zupa Dupa, the, the, the best, the absolute best uh, summer treat. Zupa Dupa is a, um, an icy pole. So it's like this, uh, long sort of uh, flavored icy pole and they've got plastic on the edges that slices your lips. Um, but that's like a summer treat. There's like bubble gum, cola. Uh, but then they brought out these like wacky flavors which were like toffee apple and like no one wanted anything to do with those. And stubby cooler. Stubby cooler is a cooler for your stubby. A stubby is a small beer. Um, and the cooler is just like, um, it's like a foam sort of a holder that you put on it to keep your beer cold while you drink it. It's a necessity, because warm beer, not good. Having a yarn, having a yarn is, um, you know, having a chat, Ooh. you know, uh, shooting the breeze, just having a, having, a, having a chat with somebody. Just spinning a yarn, I guess it comes from like wool or something like that, so I have no idea. Well, I hope, uh, I hope I could teach some of you something today. And if you ever do find yourself in Australia, um, having a yarn with someone, please uh, feel free to throw in a few of these terms. Thank you.